What's good everyone, I'm Marcus, and today I'm sharing my impression on the Tier Drop Zero trainers. Now lately, there's been a positive trend towards barefoot shoes and training, and the market has grown in popularity. The benefits of Drop Zero barefoot shoes are better contact with the ground through a thin sole, so there is no energy loss and no cushion to create instability or imbalance issues. This helps with developing and maintaining mobility across the kinetic chain from the foot to the hips. Last and perhaps most importantly is the use of a typically wider toe box to ensure a natural and optimal spread of the foot at all times. My journey with barefoot shoes and training began a couple of years ago when I decided to train barefoot. Poor mobility forced me to go with a heel shoe for squats, but it did nothing for my mobility itself and was more of a workaround. I suffered from knee pain on and off and had to focus on mobility training to alleviate the pain. After a while, I decided to train barefoot to better increase my mobility and establish a better grounding with squats and deadlifts. Thankfully, my mobility increased over time and I became extremely comfortable barefoot. My first dedicated shoe was this Barefoot Ursa in its awesome burgundy colorway as a collaboration with Kabuki Strength. These are great and I still use these in competition today. After establishing good mobility in squats while barefoot, I decided to use heel squats for competitions as an advantage in obtaining good depth on every attempt. However, I continue to use the Ursas for bench and deadlifts. The appeal of some of the newer barefoot trainers are twofold, a focus on a wide toe box and a sole structure for lateral stability. Older type deadlift slippers with just a flat glued on sole could go from side to side, especially with sumo lifters. That's also something that's an issue and lacking in my Ursas and I appreciate the lateral structure with some of the newer shoes. Construction of the tier trainers is very good and they use a Velcro type system for ease of use in putting on and taking off. Tiers also use a sock like structure or a booty and the Velcro is additional to secure your feet tightly and create additional lateral stability. For me and my foot, the Velcro is barely needed. The sock-like build allows for adequate ventilation, but your foot can still get sweaty. If I use them with the provided insole, my sweaty foot could probably pull the insole out at the end of a session. The drop zero designation refers to the fact that there is no added height in the sole or the heel. There are a couple of cushioned upper heel supports built into the top back of the shoe, and they do an exceptional job of keeping the heel from slipping out of the shoe. There is some additional TPU type support built in over the fabric of the shoe at the toe and the heel, which also helps prevent lateral movement of the shoe or getting sloppy from being stretched out. On the outside of the shoe, it's only present on the heel and the toe, but on the inside, it's carried from front to back to provide additional structure support and as an anchor for the stability strap system. Now let's talk about appearance and colors. This is the Squat University collaboration model, which comes in this very nice off-white finish with some gold accents to match the gum sole. I say off-white because they are not a truly bright white or cool white like the Advanza shoes, but more of a warm white. Now I know appearance is obviously subjective, but I find the design attractive and I always appreciate a gum sole with a white sneaker. Additionally, they are offered in black with a black sole as well as black with a red sole. I went with the Squat University collaboration because I wanted a low profile white sneaker that I could wear outside in the summer and also as a way of supporting Squat University for contributing to my mobility and helping over the years with very informative videos. Now let's talk about feel and comfort. These tier trainers offer great flexibility and have the thin grippy sole that provides good traction while allowing a good sense of the ground beneath you. The toe box is ample enough for my wide foot and they're almost unnoticeable while wearing due to the lightweight and comfortable fabric. The stability straps do a great job of pulling in the slack if needed and after the breaking period I find myself pulling the upper strap a little bit more to tighten the shoe around my instep. All the while I found these trainers to be extremely comfortable. Now I have a pair of the Advances 1.5s that I'll review next and those were initially more comfortable than these tiers but that's due to the size difference. I bought these tiers a half size smaller for some odd reason but they are true to size for me so the Advances are just a tad bit roomier and as a result I wear those with the thin insoles installed. I've worn these tiers for hours at a time and sometimes I forget they're on and this is coming from someone who has worked from home for about a decade while wearing slides all day. Now let's talk about performance. Training in these, I can feel the floor with ease due to the thin rubber outsole, and yet they're really quite comfortable on your feet, walking around, and everything else. While benching, they provide great grip for leg drive and also provide great grip for other exercises where the feet come into contact with the ground. I have not once experienced any foot slippage. These shoes help the feet feel planted and secure at all times, and the Drop Zero design provides a deep rooted connection with the surface. Now in order to demonstrate the grippiness of these trainers, I'm running them on the slide test on the back of my bench at a 45 degree angle and ironically they complete the test in almost identical times of 1 minute 16 seconds. 
This, I think, demonstrates the fact that both of these different shoes with different patterns have about the same amount of grippiness to them. Now, I threw these on the scale along with the Advances just to see for myself, and these weigh less than the Advances trainers. I think these are perfectly suitable for the lifting crowd, but I want to be clear about what type of lifting. If you're someone who does CrossFit, running, or other types of training, then I urge you to get an opinion on the suitability from those types of channels. I won't speculate on how these could work or not work in those situations, as I wouldn't know. For powerlifting or bodybuilding style training, these work great. Even some light running in the context of warm-ups on a treadmill or some sprint drills for cardio, these will work fantastic. Tier states they will offer a lace version of these in the spring, but I prefer the Velcro over the laces on my advances. Perhaps that's me in my older age of 55, but the straps are appealing to me even for wearing to the beach or out and about in the summertime. Some say these resemble deadlift slippers and therefore are less appealing for wearing outside of training, but I think only the deadlift crowd will think that, and I don't see them looking at these in a negative light, except for maybe how much you've spent on these. And that leads me to my next point, pricing. Now the tiers start at a whopping $150, and there's an additional $10 charge for these Squat University versions. I think this is pricey, honestly, but I've spent more on other types of shoes and sneakers. It's just that for a minimalist type shoe, I certainly feel these could be much less expensive. Comparing them to the Advances models and other brands, these are about 50% or more expensive, so you really have to decide if these are worth it for you. Now let's talk about pros. First and foremost for me is the grounding and comfort. My feet and foot position feel great and planted. They can be worn with or without the insoles, and despite visible stitching underneath the insole, my feet have never noticed them or felt uncomfortable. Also, the quick and easy getting on and off your foot is another plus, thanks to the Velcro straps. I even appreciate the fact that there are grab tabs at the end of the Velcro straps, so you don't have to pick at a corner of the strap with a fingernail to undo the Velcro. Now let me talk about cons or what I would change. The only thing I would change in the design is the length of the tongue, which I think is a little too long. If you look at the shoe when it's empty, you can see how far the tongue protrudes in the area where the ankle would actually be. When wearing, you can see it sometimes wrinkles or may flip over, either inside or out, but the good thing is the fabric is so soft and comfortable that this extra length of tongue doesn't result in any discomfort whatsoever. The second con, of course, would be the previously mentioned price. So for those of you who own a pair or are contemplating a pair, what are your thoughts on the design, comfort, and price? Anyway, that's all I have for this review, and I hope you'll come back for my review on the Advantis 1.5 Jamal Brown shoes that I'll have out soon. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one.